we're working really hard to get better at uh, utilizing driving time for you know for our drivers while they're on the road so that's kind of a long answer to your question right, right. so pay increases will be part of that um, the timing um, you know we can't guarantee but anticipation is rates start heading back right. and going the other direction and we and we make some progress from from the level that we were at then I, I, I think we'll start seeing some more okay time. so basically once the freight the cost of freight go up yeah yeah that's right. when we'll be able to see another company raise okay I got a good question okay what what could us drivers do to help make our comp our company more profitable it's a great question that's a great question so so because this this ties directly to the discussion we just had about rates right, right. and so um, first of all maybe before I answer that specific that uh, directly you know I think I think ELD is coming on next year will make a big difference in this rate environment um, it depends upon what data you look at and and there, there's varying opinions across the board about the impact of ELDs. We tend to think it will be fairly significant. And so ELDs means that it will tighten the capacity, which means that it will create an environment where rates can increase. If, if right. indeed that's how it plays out. So um, what we have to do along the way, and this is where our driving associates can really help us build a rates to increase our rates, frankly, is we, we have to be we have to be the best at service to our customers, at delivering loads right. safely and on time. Now we have to do well at safety, we have to do fuel and all those other kind of areas that help us to save costs and save money because um, that also positions us to be able to raise uh, driver pay. But, um, but boy, we have to be the very best at service and so I really uh, encourage our, you know, all of our, our team but our, as our, and our driving associates in their role to really, um, you know, if you, when, you, when you receive a load assignment, when you accept a load assignment, make sure that you've, you're confident that you can deliver that on right. time. Right. and then make sure that you do and if something comes up that's going to prevent you from doing that we pick up the phone you know make a make a phone call because our what our customers hate worse than us being late is them finding out from their customer that we're late instead of from us okay and so um so let's let's pick up and deliver on time and be you know be you know represent the company well right. wear your company shirt right, right. And, and uh you know all those kind of things right because we're the front line we're the front absolutely. line of customer service and absolutely. we always go i always go in and good morning how you doing you know, how your day going because you right. just never know what right. somebody is dealing with right. at home and they come in to work with you know because they right. got a job don't mean they not backed up with bills yeah um because i know a lot of drivers is here and a lot of drivers want to be successful and i just wanted them to hear from you what it would take for us to make our company more yeah. successful yeah and yeah you know picking up and delivering loads and also it it comes down to the dms being um putting loads in front of us and not chasing the load you know right. give us time to get right. to the load no and not put the load that should have been picked up and now when we deliver it it makes it look like we're late yeah, and, I, and what I would say is about that is, is if you're just work closely with your driver and manager, and if you're feeling that's happening, just talk with them real openly right. about it, and, and just realize that even in the even in the best um, in the in the best of trucking, if you will, um, there's still going to be things that are going to happen, right? A customer's going to call in a load late, or or someone's going to have a load plan, and then and then their uh, their truck gets delayed in the shop, maybe yep. because of a repair issue that comes up, and so. Um, so something you know you might receive get one that's gosh we're kind of behind the eight ball on a little bit already so just 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 communicate and then uh, and then just you know let's just go to work and it really is a team effort between to your point between our yeah. driving associate and our driver managers and our account people to deliver a really a really high level of service right because that that's the one thing I know I've been working on like right now since I came out from home time July 12th, I have 23 on-time deliveries, and nice. I got one late, and that was because of Labor Day holiday. What I did was, and this was my mistake, I got up, I didn't look at Google Maps to check the traffic, uh -huh. and forgot it was yeah. a holiday. So when I started to leave out of, um, I was in Henderson, Nevada, going into Cali, yeah. I hit that traffic, traffic. and uh -huh. I was like, yeah. you know what, if I sit in it, I'm going to be late. So I shut down, but by the time the clock came back around, it still made me late because it was still traffic. Yeah. Yep. Four in the morning, five in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And Those are, yeah. we got to help. I know a lot of drivers need to learn how to run the clock. A lot of drivers still don't know how to do A2 split and run the clock efficiently and talk to the DM. Um, 
Yeah, the, and, and the thing is that boy, that's so important. And this, you know, this being on time really ties directly to your productivity because if you if you're on time, then we can plan loads, right? Yeah. On the next load, if if we don't know for sure if you're going to be on time, it's difficult to plan for the next load. But right. a driver that consistently delivers on time um, gives us opportunity to really be ahead of ahead of you to your point in planning as as much as we can, depending upon the market conditions and yeah. load avail availability. And, and, and I started doing like. On my YouTube, I started doing my own self challenge to see how many loads I can yeah, get delivered yeah. in a row to challenge myself. And maybe a lot of drivers should do that because if you if you start getting more on time, that that'll increase your productivity. That'll make our company look good. That'll make yeah. the customer happy. And yes, I know sometimes we'll get to a shipper because I'm on refund. Sometimes we there eight hours, twelve hours, and I'm glad I'm touching that because I just noticed we got right. an increase in detention pay. We did. So, yeah. Uh, twelve hours now instead of ten dollars. So I definitely appreciate that because there's a lot of times we there for a whole shift. I know, I know, and it, uh, yeah, we we felt the need to change detention pay, and we, you know, we're not, you know, again, we're not in a in a in the greatest rate environment right now. But right. We, but we still felt that this was an important area, and. Uh, and so we we made that change effective. Um, gosh, I think a week ago today or two weeks ago today, um, to twelve dollars from the ten. So, and and I think there's still um, you know some room on that to continue to improve, and we'll take it one step at a time. So, but it's certainly a uh, certainly a step in the right direction. Yeah. Now, I have a question. A lot of people want to do lease purchase. Okay. And in California, I know you can't do lease purchase in California. Why is Correct. that? You know, California is a is a very litigious environment, as you know. Right. And uh, at night, and many other trucking companies have been subject to, um, you know, to lawsuits relative to the misclassification, okay. as it's described as owner operators. We feel very strongly in our position, um, but we are we are working through some of those kind of things, and so um, at this point, we just. Uh, we just felt it's prudent to uh, to not bring on any any additional right in California and uh, and a few other other places even so, um, but that's that's really where we're at right now. Okay, in California. I got a question because I know a lot of drivers is frustrated when drivers is dropping trailers with bad mud flaps, mm -hmm. flat tires. Yeah. From here in corporate. Will these drivers start being dis you know, being held responsible for these things? I had a trailer where a mother flat was hanging off. I fixed it myself because I looked at it like this. If I go into the TA, I was at a truck stop. Yeah. But if I go in the TA, it's gonna cost our company money. Right. When I right. can take five, ten minutes. And, you time. Yeah, and and I have the video on YouTube of me doing the mud flat. Yeah. Just unloosen the bolts, push it back on, tighten it up, it saved us money. It saved me time. Yeah. You yeah. know, sitting on the phone with breakdown and then going right. into the shop and then they gonna drag around because they charge us a hundred dollars for the just going in the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Then they gonna charge you for the mud flat. So at a TA. At a yeah. TA right. or a right. petrol right. or a flying J. Right. And if you can do these things yourself, I feel drivers should do it themselves. Some drivers will, some drivers won't. But a lot of drivers that have pride, that love being here, like I do, I'm going to fix it. Yeah, that's because right. that's just another way of cutting costs for us. Don't yeah. have to send money. Out. That's the way I would. That's the way I would do it too, and, okay. and it saves you time. Yeah, it saves you time. So, um, so to your question, we, you know, we're really when you think through the pro the management process for this issue. It really, it really begins with a good pre-trip inspection, right? And so, really, we all, all of our driving associates and, and independent contractors, it's, it's just critical right. that you get. We do a good pre-trip um, every day, and then if you're dealing with multiple trailers throughout the day, when you pick up the a new trailer, you know, get a good pre-trip done because that provides the feedback mechanism that we need. And by the way, it's required by law, right? Right. It's a requirement. So, um, but if we can. If we can get a good good pre trips coming in, and we're and we're getting better there. I mean, as a company, we're in right. the uh, um, you know our, our percentages are, are increasing, and so um, but we need everybody to do pre trips, and then what that will do, what we're what we're working on is to because because you, you can imagine with 
with as many trucks as we run and many cruise ships, that's a ton of data coming in, right? Right. And all the data points from around the truck and the trailer, and so we are uh, we are working to streamline that as the data comes in to quickly identify, like you just talked about, right. a truck, a trailer that was dropped with no mud flap, mm -hmm. and uh, and so then we can we can we can track that back to the previous driver right. and to see. You know to see what uh, see what happened there. So. Yeah, because the reason I asked that is because a lot of drivers are drop a trailer with a flat tire, or right. they are dropping with. And I was just in the yard in Phoenix, and a driver. It was a cold trans driver that had a trailer with a mud yeah. flap hanging on by one screw. I'm thinking, yeah. you know, he gonna fix it. But then I seen one of our night drivers posted like, "Come on, guys, we gotta do better than this." Yeah. Right. And, and you know. What happens is when these drivers don't fix these things, now if I drop a bad trail and you come get it, now it's your clock that I got to get. That's right. You have to right. sit and spend because you could have came into the trip into the yard grabbing that load yeah. and you wanted to go right back out, but now you got to go to the shop. You got to yeah. get in the inspection lane. That's yeah. killing your clock and that's yeah. going to frustrate you. And we have to look out for each other. It don't matter what side we on. No question here at the company. So that's why I asked that question, like, you know, is there a way, you know, corporate is going to start holding drivers responsible for these things because it kills yeah. the next person's clock. Yeah, it does. It does. And we, yeah, that's really the direction we're heading. But I think, I think what you said is so critical that we, if everybody just does a good job. And so even like the mud flap, for example, it, it, I'm pretty sure if it may have been there or something, you know, it, it got knocked off somehow during transit. So. Um, so when you drop the trailer, just do a quick walk around and look for yep. it, and, and uh, um, you know, and double check those things on tires. Um, I don't know if we've talked about this on our on our Facebook events or not before, but we we are now bringing in trailers that have um, inflation systems. Yeah, so I saw our, that. Started in June. Yep. All of our trailers going forward. So. Um, and that's all the be, new trailers y'all bringing in, it's right? All new, okay. It's all new trailers going forward have inflation systems, and we're very optimistic about that technology. To help us to be, uh, you know, to to uh, to be safer, to have and just to and to minimize costs with uh, with tires, and I think it's a great uh, I think it's a great convenience for our drivers, and so yes, um, we are, we we trade a lot of trailers every year, um, sell the old ones and buy new ones, but it still will take some time to work through the fleet right. to get everything right. uh, equipped with uh, inflation systems, but uh, I think that'll be real positive. Me as me being a driver here. Those inflation systems on the trailer tires is a wonderful thing due to the fact because I'm from the Northeast mm -hmm. and when that snow come down, I'm going to be honest, I don't oh. be wanting to be squatting down the inflating yeah. tire because your fingers get numb. It, yeah. yeah, you know. So that was a great investment and I definitely appreciate that and I know a lot of drivers is going to appreciate that. And that's a, another reason drivers don't inflate tires and we need to inflate the tires because yeah. when we get pulled yeah. in the DOT, and they, they do a level one, level two, and yep. we got, once our score go up with DOT, I know we're going to start getting more red lights. Right now, we getting a lot of green lights, yeah. and a lot of drivers right. got to stay on top of the inspection. I know a lot of people, um, I got a question for the zona. You know, a lot of drivers will get up, and they might walk around their truck before they go to sleep, and then get up the next morning and just be do 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 and... I always take time on each tab. Yeah, right. Because just in case DOT like, oh, let me look at it. And then you got, let's say, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 one 10 one 10 one inspection, yeah, right. You know, I, I, I want to stretch it out where I have 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And I know a lot of people like, well, you know, I know my truck. I know what's wrong with it. But at the end of the day, somebody could come. Do something to your truck while you were asleep. Which happens sometimes. Which has happened. Yeah, you know, it has happened. Yeah. Your tire can, you could have backed up into a spot at a truck stop, ran over a nail. Right. And right. you wake up the next morning and it'd be an inner tire that's flat. So, mm -hmm. um, trucks, I know we get into Cascadia. Is that going to be a fleet-wide thing? Well, we, we are three primary brands, our Volvo and the Navisar right. and the Freightliner. And um, you know we, we make a decision um, each year um, going forward, really based upon what the o, what's happening with the OEMs, what's happening with um, the technology and right. the price and the 
fuel of the truck, in other words, the cost of the truck, the fuel efficiency, and all those kind of things, and and uh, and really really look really look at those kind of factors. And so um, we we we're we're um, fans of the Freightliners. Right. Um, they have a spot, but so do the Volvos and the Navistars, and so. We will continue to have a mix going forward as our as our plan at this point, and um, and it will just it will just vary each year, kind of dep you know as far as the numbers of each right, that we bring right, in, depending right. upon um, depending upon how we're you know how how things are, are going with the OEM okay. with the manufacturers. So, but we're we're very comfortable with those three those three trucks. Yeah, because I see a lot of the drivers that's like, oh, I see you know y'all got the Cascadia on. You know the drive-in side and the refrigerated side. So a lot of drivers is like, okay, some don't want the Volvo, some don't want the Pro Star, yeah, right. but a lot of them don't want the Cascadia, right. and they right. want to know if that's going fleet wide. And then down in my terminal in Memphis, we have the Peterbilts. Is that going to just be like for Cummins, or is it's that going Cummins. to be that's yeah. Cummins? Okay. Yeah, we boy Cummins has been such a great customer for us. And yes. We, 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 we really appreciate the, the, to that company and the business and their vendor with engines for us, right? And so we have the, we, we run out of Memphis and uh, we deliver into some Packard facilities and so we, we needed some Peterbilts to, you know, to uh, for Cummins benefit right. to have that product going into those facilities. And so um, that's really the, the scope of, at this point at least, of, that, of those trucks. Right. Um. Somebody asked a question here, chain hangers. You know, once we take the chains out those, the bags in our side yeah. box, a lot of our trucks don't have the hooks for the chain. So you put the chains back in your side box, it gets all rusty, you mess up your side box. Mm -hmm. So a lot of drivers want to know, um, could we get chain hangers on our, on our tractors? You know, that's a, that's a great question. I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I don't know what our plan is, so we'll, we will um, we'll, we'll we'll find out and respond right. on, uh, on on Facebook. the next on the next one. So on the next yeah. one, we'll find out more about chain hangers. But that's that is a good thing because yeah. you know the driver Christopher he said, you know it takes up a lot of space in our side box. Yeah. You know, and a yeah. lot of us live in our trucks, and a lot of us is on the road for an extended amount of time, and we need as much space in our side box. Yeah. You know, extra load locks and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a yeah. No, that's a great question, Christopher. I can see that there too. So we'll, we'll respond to Christopher on this yep. on the after. So Christopher, event. we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, okay. Tracking of the trailers, how okay. you know how much of the fleet is done already. We have about ninety-two percent of our of our trailers um, that are that are tracking today that have um, operating tracking devices. So, so we're at that. I mean, this is the toughest part of it, right? This last eight percent, because part of it is part of it is trailers that do not yet have tracking that we've got to get on. Right. Part of the trailers that already have a device, but they've stopped functioning, so we've got to get them back in. Which okay. that that part of it will always be, you know, will be right. a part of life, if you will, with having tracking. Devices, so we have processes in, in place to, to identify and manage those trailers. But, but yeah, we're at we're at ninety two percent, so it's, it's starting to be really meaningful okay. for us. And that's both that's both sides. I think. Or y'all did the dry van trailers. The dry van are ninety two. No, we we're doing reefers too. I think I think reefers a little higher than that actually. Okay. So, yeah, because I haven't I haven't seen nobody like, oh, I'm running around looking for a trailer here, looking yeah. for a trailer yeah. there. Um, is this is the since the drive van is being done, when they hook up to that trailer, is it already reading what tractor's hooking up, or? We, not yet. They just put in the tractors not on, yet. trying to get all that yes. done, and then yes. the next phase of yeah, we, the system. Yeah, we, I shouldn't say, we can identify that, but we have, we still have some programming work to do. Right. To, what, what our goal is, honestly, with trailers, and, and uh, with the zone R inspections, all those kind of things, so. So think about, in other words, when, when you do a pre-trip, I know you have to enter the trader number, and I think yeah. you have to do it multiple times, but how nice would it be is to take that tablet, scan the trader tag, and have it integrate the trader number, right? right? And then if the trader number doesn't match with the load in, load information said, now we can deal with that issue, right? But And so we that's really where we want to get, and then uh, and then to, ha then to have a real high level of visibility when, you know, with uh, connect and disconnect, which we already have, which we have, we just need to leverage, you know, we're right. continuing to work to leverage that a little bit right. more. And, uh, and another thing um, with the zonar tax, and I, I want to ask this personally myself.